Standard keys have managed to make a keyboard that is anything but standard. Split Ergo is a form factor that I've personally never been interested in. It's always held a pretty niche space in the hobby, probably primarily due to the learning curve needed. Today, Standard Keys sent out their TWS keyboard, so we'll be able to see whether or not going split is worth it, and if it's something you should genuinely consider. I've recently been favoring boring, cost-effective packaging, and before you say, Kelvin, this is massive copium, it's because of some conversations I've been having with vendors. Packaging costs are much more expensive than people people think, especially in the Switch market, and extravagant packaging can easily add unnecessary dollars on a price tag. So while I do love novelty, plain cardboard like this does just fine, and shows commitment to a digestible price. Hidden under here are two cables for each board section, a small screwdriver, and our small bits, including bottom feet, extra screws, and a wireless dongle. The TWS is a split ergo keyboard, which stands for True Wireless Split. We have a primarily plastic and rubber case and a hot swap south facing PCB that has no daughter board. This runs on proprietary software, which can be used to configure key and knob mappings. Naturally, with a split, we have no layout options and also only an integrated plate. The TWS will come in either black or white and will range from $139 to $159. So this build has no stabs, making our lives a lot easier. I'm going to throw in these stock DD switches, because when in doubt of the sound profile, you really can't go wrong with DDs. Now I'll install MT3 Susu Watari, and I actually cut my finger opening the plastic MT3 cases, so be careful with the sharp edges. And lastly, I'll open each side up and connect the battery. Let's take a listen. The sound ends up being kind of scratchy and pingy, which I haven't really experienced a whole lot with stock DDs. With the density of the case and the integrated plate, this board is definitely going to lean towards the higher pitched and duller side. This also means that there's no real room to play around with, and you can't even really foam the board since the space inside the case is pretty much nothing. The only real bet here is tape modding, but I'm not sure the audience of this keyboard is going to be looking at optimizing sound in the first place. For a workplace or productivity keyboard, slapping some silent switches in here would be the best bet. As for feel, there isn't a whole lot to comment on with an integrated plate. It's stiff, but certainly not sharp feeling as the top case is still plastic. I would attribute it to something between the feel of FR4 and aluminum. The only real way to change the sound or feel is going to be to swap the switches and keycaps, and long pull is definitely going to play a pretty big part in this. So if you want something that doesn't feel as sharp, I would avoid long pull and also look at switches with slow or progressive springs. As for the design, it's fairly basic. We have a top case and bottom case structure, with the bottom case also including an angled rubber piece that houses the battery. There's also a pretty accentuated seam between the two. The USB-C port for each side is offset a little bit towards the general middle, although the only real use for these is to update software and charge the sides. On top, we also have a knob and LED screen on each side. I like how each side's battery is displayed on the screen, although it tends to fluctuate a lot, so I'm not sure if it's entirely accurate. It's also kind of funny that the left screen displays number lock and caps lock when the board doesn't even have keys on the top layer to control either. The ability to customize these screens will be added to the proprietary software later, and I think at this point, screen configuration is something VIA should be supporting, as I've seen more and more keyboards start to include them. The left knob controls volume, and the right knob controls scroll by default but these are of course configurable with the software. Neither is incredibly smooth or consistent for that matter, and since great rotary encoders aren't exactly hard to find in the hobby, I'd definitely like to see these improved. It also doesn't seem like there's a power switch, only a sleep timer, which can definitely be annoying if you're going certain periods without typing and have to wait for the boards to wake up again. Also, material quality of the cases is a point of worry for me. There's some very obvious inconsistencies and scuffing on the plastic and rubber areas, and this really shouldn't be happening. Since the scuffs tend to show up as white, I'm not sure if this is really going to be an issue for the white cases, but it really depends on the texture of the plastic being used. According to the website, these boards are acrylic. I've definitely seen some high quality acrylic implementation, so I know it can be improved. However, with this construction, the boards do end up being very light, and paired with wireless capability make them a great portable option. The 2.4G wireless capability, which is the main selling point of this board, is stable as projected. I did have one drop where the right side got a little bit stuttery, but as far as I've been using it, that's really it. 
I'm not exactly sure how it's being implemented since both sides need to be somewhat synced together. It's kind of irrelevant when it comes to changing layouts and key functions however since everything does have to be plugged in for it. The default layout is kind of strange and I had to remap it to add a space on the right side and the enter key as neither were assigned at all. As for battery, the life seems to be really long. According to their website, it'll last 75 days granted you type for 2 hours a day, and this seems to be about right. So now it's time to talk about the layout itself. Initially using it is very difficult, and my typing speed tanked. However, the layout is super comfortable and adjustable, as you can move and turn both sides individually. After using it for about a week, I still find it kind of hard to use, and don't think I'll personally be able to adopt the board into my setup. The height of the MT3 keycaps isn't helping, as it does end up being kind of tall. But of course, you can use any lower profile like Cherry or DSA, depending on your preference. And of course, if your sets can comfortably support the strange layout. Overall, I think it's hard to justify practicality here. There's simply too many keys missing, forcing you to use layers to access simple functions. There are splits with more keys, so this isn't really an issue with the form factor as a whole. But even then, there's definitely a learning curve if you haven't used Split before, since key spacing is slightly different from Alice or Arisu. For the features, however, I think the price of the TWS is really fair. Although in today's super competitive market, I wouldn't really call it budget. You can get something like the QK60 now starting at just $150, and with a wireless PCB, doesn't come out to be a huge price difference from the TWS. But if Ergo Split is your thing, the TWS is a super fun and unique choice.